I really don't know why I didn't include this game on the list the first time around, but in hindsight, I'm glad I waited because, oh boy, has Among Us somehow gotten even worse over the course of the past year. Let's get something straight right out of the gate. I don't want to hear about how it's fun if you play with the right group of people, because if you tell me that, then you're only further highlighting the issue. The quality of your experience in this game is 100% dependent on other people being smart, but the problem is that other people are brain dead and that makes the experience insufferable because it's not a battle of deception to outwit the others and see if you can identify the logical contradictions and pursue the truth. It's a bunch of mindless sheep following the flock to vote for the most hated person of the round. Don't believe me? Well, let's take a look at some examples, shall we? First up, we have the most common trend among people who play this game. One person says, this color is suspicious, or it's this color, and then everyone else immediately votes for that person without any sense of logical reasoning whatsoever. Green did nothing wrong here, he just committed the unforgivable crime of existing in an Among Us game, and thus someone randomly said he was suspicious and was therefore ejected for it. But even if he was doing something suspicious, that's literally irrelevant because the only means we had to determine that was this one person's testimony which absolutely nobody questioned or pressed more information at all and could easily have been lying. And then they did it again, and again, and would you look at that, they were not the imposter! Meaning they were ejected from the game not because of anything they did wrong or because an elaborate lie was told by the imposter, but because some random idiot was like, hey guys, it's white! And then the mindless sheep all followed suit. Phenomenal. Just such enriching, intelligent discourse. And I certainly hope you're not going to say, uh, that guy's obviously the imposter. That's a good strategy on his part. Because if you are, then one, wow, your standards for what constitutes a good strategy are whack. Two, that should not work as a strategy. You shouldn't be able to just say, it's this person completely randomly with no evidence and having done nothing to earn anybody's trust and have that work. Three, no, he wasn't the imposter. He's just a moron or a pathetic troll. Next, we have the second most common trend in Among Us discourse, automatically defaulting to voting at the person who reported the body. Literally no information is shared outside of where the body was found. It is the first report of the game and they immediately point to the reporter with, once again, zero evidence. Bring in the mindless sheep. Sometimes it'll even happen after absolutely no discourse at all. Sometimes you will literally just report the body, say where you found it, nobody else will say a fucking thing, and then the sheep army charges into battle and you get fucked by absolutely no fault of your own. And then it happens again, and again! Boy, howdy, this sure is a well-designed video game! And that's just the broad problems that can be applied to almost every single round of this god-awful game. Now, let's take a look at some of the unexpected situational bullshit that happened while I was recording footage for this video, and see how bad things can really get. I'm So Sus accuses Bell of faking keys. Bell's rebuttal is, I was talking and got distracted. I'm So Sus's only recourse is... Oh. What? You accepted that rebuttal? That doesn't account for the accusation you just made! But that's not even the worst thing to come out of this game. Later, Bell and I run down into O2 from Electrical. Bell kills TIE Freighter and then runs back into Electrical. Why she thought doing this was a good idea when she knew I was right there is absolutely beyond me, but hey, maybe she knew she'd get away with it due to the fact that the people who play this game are brain dead because after I reported the body, I wanted to say that Bell killed TIE Freighter. Except, I didn't see the name tag. I only saw the color of the space uniform because it's much easier in the heat of the moment to identify purple killed green than it is to say, Bell killed TIE Freighter. But because this game is really shit, the way this auto-chat works is that you have to know the username of who was killed in order to make the accusation. But as if that's not bad enough, this moron says, Bell killed on cams, it couldn't have been her, and everyone believes them! Despite the fact that Bell was unaccounted for while this dumbass was sitting on the cameras, meaning there was a substantial period of time that her ally was not accounted for that this person cannot defend! But there is no auto-chat option for that! That doesn't fit one of the prescribed auto-chat situations, so I can't do shit in this meeting except say the very convincing phrase of, Jeez. Lying! Whatever she says, it's not true! Oh, but wait! It gets worse! Because the next person to die in this round is me! The only one who knew the truth that she was the imposter was immediately killed off, and nobody calls it out in the next meeting. But not only that, in this next meeting, someone else who is completely unrelated to me accuses Belle of being the culprit. And the fact that I was killed should only further bolster the idea that Belle was the imposter because I wasn't voted out, I was killed. Meaning I absolutely was not the imposter and wouldn't have been lying about what Belle did. And now that someone else has cast suspicion upon her, there should be no room for doubt, and yet the same dumb fuck from earlier adamantly stands by her screaming that it wasn't Belle, and so everyone gangs up on the line player and thus the game is then lost! Congratulations you fucking moron, you lost everybody the game! But Magic, are you dumb? That person was obviously the imposter! No! No they fucking were, they were just a moron! Again! That's all this game is, dealing with people that are actually brain dead, it's infuriating to play! There is no intelligent discourse to be found in 99% of the rounds I've played in this game, and things only get worse given the fact that people leave the lobby if they don't get the imposter role or if they die, and because
because of that, all I had to do in one round was literally kill one person and the round was immediately won because almost the entire lobby had already left despite the fact that the game had already started and nobody had died yet. And let's talk a little bit more about that dumbass auto chat feature, shall we? This auto chat function is impossible to use. The options you have to choose from are way too broad and not appropriate at all for specific situations. It forces you to pay attention to the name tags because you can't just say blue killed green for some stupid reason. And even navigating the menus is insanely cumbersome. And don't even get me started on completing tasks while playing on a console. Because aside from the fact that the items don't actually lock in place for some of them, there is an artificial shaking effect that is placed on your cursor despite the fact that you already have an inherent disadvantage because you're using a controller. So the big brains that made this game thought that making it even harder for a controller player was a brilliant idea and makes completing this Asteroids minigame more painful than playing Super Mario Sunshine. No! You're playing public lobbies! You gotta play private lobbies! Yeah. Okay, that's a bullshit defense anyway because the option is there. It's a way to play. I shouldn't have a garbage experience going online because not everybody has 10 to 15 friends willing to chop many years off their lifespan by getting together to play this terrible game. But alright, let's look at some examples of private lobbies, shall we? First, we have this insanity during one of Shift's live streams. I really, you just need to watch this video for yourself to get a proper understanding of how idiotic this was. Next, we have Jacksepticeye's play sessions, featuring PewDiePie accusing Sean for no reason and then for seem to get pissy when he gets accused for no reason, or my personal favorite, which is everyone accusing Sean because the bar didn't go up when he did the card swipe, despite that logic being blatantly flawed because the card swipe is delayed. And finally, we have the last game played during the Game Theorist St. Jude charity livestream in December of 2020. I guess if Diana found the body, the thing you could have also- where'd you, where'd you separate him? Where'd you separate him? The arrow that you sabotaged? <laughs> I'm gonna vote you if you don't sex him. Where'd you separate with him? I was leaving. Oh, you! Period. Oh my God! Okay. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> my brain broke when I watched this happen live. There's obviously the issue of them constantly talking over him and not letting him explain himself. And then when this guy said, "I'm gonna vote you if you don't say something, dude," at which point Marquez probably said something to explain himself, and before he could get even a single syllable out, they voted for him. Yeah, this is so much better than public lobbies, let me tell you. But even if you detach the game from its community and just look at its actual design, it still comes out to be a heaping pile of trash. For one thing, there's only one decent map. The skill. The other three maps are all horrific for one reason or another. Polis sucks because your progress is constantly stinted by artificial door locks and decontamination hallways. So much of it boils down to navigating tight corridors and overly claustrophobic areas despite having some of the most open designs of the three maps. And there are so many goddamn dead ends. Mirror HQ is too goddamn small for the imposter to be able to do anything even remotely successful while simultaneously being a pain to navigate because there is no natural flow to it. It's segmented off into a bunch of different corridors. And the airship is by far the worst of the bunch. It's an amalgamation of everything wrong with this game. It's way too fucking big for its own good and has way too many goddamn dead ends. Even worse than Polis. Navigating this thing is a massive pain in the ass because it's even more segmented than Mirror HQ and a lot of getting around boils down to waiting for these slow-ass platforms to get moving. It was so agonizing to get anywhere that at a certain point I was just praying for the imposter to kill me so I could just get my tasks done easier. Speaking of tasks, though, fuck the garbage minigame. The trash bag just does not leave the bin. No matter how much you bounce it up and down, it just stays trapped like it's super glued inside. And while we're tearing minigames to shreds, this switch flipping minigame is horrible because it accepts everybody's input simultaneously, meaning you're in a constant tug of war battle with the other players to reset the damn lights. It's also horrifically unoptimized with loading screens that give Persona 5 strikers a run for its money, except at least in that game you can tell it's supposed to be a loading screen, whereas Among Us just leaves you stranded on a black screen wondering if your game froze. The server browser actually lies to you because the player counts don't update in real time, so even if it says there's room in a server, by the time you actually click on it, it may have already filled up. And this happens way too often and makes joining a game a massive pain in the ass. And the server desync problems are atrocious, which is unacceptable in a game dependent on accurately calling out the positions of other players. Among Us is a terribly designed game with a terrible community surrounding it, and when you combine those two things together, you get digital sewage. <sighs>